This is where Mother Mac and her puppies live with Don and Doug Dowell. Mother Mac has trained her seven puppies to be well-behaved, brave little dogs. Now that they are six weeks old, they are able to leave their mother for new homes. Doug gives the puppies the right food to make them strong and healthy. They eat three meals a day. Don trains Tammy to sit up, as he thinks other children like a dog who knows how to do tricks. The boys are proud of the puppies and want each dog to look his best when Mr. Conover comes over to choose one. But the puppies just can't see any reason for making a fuss. They don't realize how important it is to look clean and well-groomed. Now, Bobo, that's not a toothbrush, and it's not good to eat. Doug is patient but firm with the little dogs. Mr. Conover, who lives next door, comes to pick out his dog. He examines the puppies carefully. He knows that a good dog has strong, sturdy bones, a healthy coat of hair, a bright, intelligent look, and, most important, a good disposition. The boys tell him the good points of each of the puppies. Donnie tells Mr. Conover how smart Tammy is. And Tammy likes Mr. Conover right from the start. Don would like to have Tammy live next door to play with Bobo, the dog that their father has said they may keep. Each one of the puppies is so cute, it is hard for Mr. Conover to decide. Doug wants the puppies to show how frisky they are, but the puppies want to play in the box where they sleep. Doug keeps a blanket in their box because he knows it is important for puppies to have a warm, dry place to sleep. Mother Mac wonders what is happening. Tammy has won Mr. Conover's heart, and he takes Tammy home to live with him and Mrs. Conover and their cat, Anna. Mother Mac is worried. She does not want Tammy to go. And Tammy is a little homesick at first. Donnie comforts the puppy. Very soon, Tammy is as happy as he can be. This is a home where a puppy can relax and enjoy himself. He makes friends with Anna, the cat. Dogs and cats are often good friends when they get to know one another. Anna likes him and tries to mother the baby dog. Tammy is very contented in his new home with Anna and the Conovers to take care of him. Later, Aunt Lucy shows the puppies to her friend, Mrs. McLeod, who wants a good-natured dog to play with her children and to learn to guard them as he grows up. Mark is too young to keep all the leashes of the six little puppies from getting tangled, especially when each puppy wants to go in a different direction. Mark isn't a bit afraid because he knows a puppy won't snap at him unless he teases the puppy or is rough with him. Mrs. McLeod teaches Mark to be gentle with the little dogs. She is as good and kind to a puppy as she is to her own children. She knows that a happy home for a puppy is one where there is plenty of love and where the puppy can feel he is needed to love and protect his family. Puppies are good companions because it is their instinct to love people. The puppy looks up at Mrs. McLeod as if to say, I would like you to be my mistress. I will take good care of your babies. Paul has never seen so many puppies. 
Puppies are so friendly, he thinks it's fun to choose a dog. <laughs> Mrs. McLeod takes her puppy in for dinner. A nice way to begin life in a new home. Mr. Tim comes to pick out a puppy for his grandson, Moat. Don is a good salesman, and Mr. Tim chooses Rudy. He takes Rudy to live in the country, where Moat and his family raise flowers for market. A week later, Doug goes to visit Moat and Rudy. Moat's uncle is a fisherman, and the children like to play on the nets piled high on the truck. Moat is very proud of Rudy, who adores Moat and follows him wherever he goes. Moat enjoys taking care of his dog himself. Rudy always wags his tail and is grateful for everything Moat does for him. In the meantime, Jiggs has gone to live with a gentle Mrs. Shanks and her cat, Puss in Boots. Mrs. Shanks understands animals and gives them lots of affection. Jiggs tries as hard as he can to please her. Like all dogs, he has quickly adapted himself to his new family. He is not at all lonesome for his brothers and sisters with Puss in Boots for a playmate. Mickey has a good home with the Bickers family. Mrs. Bickers tells the children a story. She is kind and teaches the children to be thoughtful with their new dog. Tony is old enough to know what a little dog likes. She is gentle with her new puppy and Mickey is devoted to his mistress. Tony knows a little dog needs plenty of exercise and unfastens Mickey's collar to play with him. Mickey likes to romp with Tony. He would like to catch the ball. He runs and runs. But his little legs are so short, he soon gets tired and comes back to Mrs. Bickers. A puppy can't ask for a drink of water, so it must always be where he can get it. Such good care makes a happy home for Mickey. Mr. White, who works for the milk company, stops by on his way home to look over the puppies. The boys like Mr. White, and are anxious to have him take one of the puppies to live with him and his family. Mr. White knows the points of a good dog and feels the puppies to be sure that they are strong and husky. He looks carefully into their eager little faces. He would like a smart puppy because he wants to teach him tricks. Kilty seems to be just the right dog for Mr. White. But Mr. White thinks Bobo is a fine dog too. However, he decides on Kilty and takes him to put him in the front of his truck. The boys give Mr. White the dog's bed so Kilty will be comfortable in his new home. Kilty feels welcome in his new family. Penny and the neighborhood children love to play with the puppy. And although Kilty loves to play with them, it is hard for a little dog to keep up with so many children. Penny is teaching the dog to sit up. Sometimes children hurt their pets by being too rough with them. Or by squeezing them too hard. Penny's mother reminds her to be gentle. And Kilty is happy but sleepy in his new home.
Back at the Dowell's home, Mother Mac is lonesome without her puppies, and Doug tries to cheer her up. Bobo, too, seems sad. But the boys are pleased that each puppy has found such a good home. They have learned that a happy home, whether for a puppy or for a girl or boy, can be large or small, in the city or in the country, as long as it is one where your family love you and you do your best to be kind and helpful.